thing to think about today and the thing that really makes us stand out from the competition is our dealer network. An example of that is, is the service truck that we have up doing a little bit of work on the GET on that 6060. So we really want to focus on lowered downtime, high availability, and when that, when that machine's up and ready to run, we want to make sure that we have operators in there. We're at um, over 180 countries with 500 locations, and that's really just our dealer branches that you typically see out in the, in the towns and, and uh, some of the larger cities. But the other thing to think about today in mining is that we're on the mine site. So we have a lot of properties around the world where we have full dealership support in there from parts to service, technicians. Uh, so anything that we can do in a branch at our dealerships, at a lot of these large mines around the world, we're able to do that today. In the same way that Ken talked about being able to optimize and utilize the, tech, the use of technology, it's the same way that you know, Ken and I, we kid each other a lot about the operations versus maintenance, but uh, really we have to partner together very well so that we're able to deliver those available hours to the production partner so that we can actually provide reliable available hours so they can get the most out of their uh, pr production. You know, through our dealers, what we want to do is provide valued quality product. And of course, with that product, we want to be able to provide you as our customers our lowest cost per tonne. And from the maintenance side, you know, we, we want to talk a little bit about how we look at things and how we help the production departments. And we look at availability, productivity and costs. And so we're going to talk about and during the, the demo here, which is something that we haven't done previously, is we're going to talk about five of the key processes in condition monitoring, planning and scheduling, backlog management, preventive maintenance and repair management. And so we're going to try and weave a little bit of that message in through the demo here. And Ken talked about the service truck there that's up at the, uh, the shovel. And so that's a really good example of having the right tool for the right job. And so with that piece of equipment there, you know, especially with the with these shovels, they don't go back to the workshop for their PM. And so you need to be very well equipped, you need to have the right tools, you need to have the right planning and scheduling, you need to have the right people, and everything set up such that you're taking that workshop to the machine in the field, and you're executing a very effective and efficient PM, reducing those downtimes, driving reliability, and improving that mean time between sketch between stoppages. So we think about a mining operation today, we typically think large loaders, large HMS machines, big mining trucks, but we have to think about how we're supporting that mining operation as well. You saw the 950M down here with a quick coupler, has a third valve on it, came in and dropped off that, uh, that bucket, picked it back up with a set of forks and took it out of here. Think about how that machine can support our operation. We saw a couple of the skid steers. We see the little 315 going back into the tunnel. Think about that machine coming in and cleaning out some ditches along your haul roads and things like that and scraping out some of that material that's being carried around in the back of your mining trucks today. We don't want to be pulling our big mining machines out to do this type of support work. We want to make sure that we utilize equipment like this, again, that's offered by Caterpillar to bring it in and do the support work so we can keep this large mining equipment out working on the sites, out hauling tons, again, driving down that cost per ton. 982M over here. So one of the areas on most mine sites globally that is probably, we probably don't put enough focus on that has a huge impact on things like fuel burn, component life, tire life, is our haul roads. We look at the 982 up there. We've processed some material and we're putting it in a couple of articulated tippers, dump trucks. And we're going to bring those out here in a few minutes and show you how these dump. But the interesting thing is we, we spend a lot of time worrying about cost per ton. We know that we have purchased this fleet of trucks to run 31, 32 mile an hour, 34 mile an hour, and we're not achieving that. So all the, all the FPC study that we did up front to set this mine up to run, we're not achieving that speed, so we're not going to achieve that target production rate that we need to achieve. Things like this can help us. We come in and we properly build up our haul roads and we put some nice material on top to allow us to get those high speeds, extend that tire life, and reduce that component cost. We're going to go ahead and load both of the, those up while we now start bringing in some of the machines that we typically think of as mining machines. Now, where does this all start? It all starts with drilling and blasting. So we have a mine plan, now we have to mine to that plan. So we look at material fragmentation and how well we blast this, 
this material, and that's going to help us determine what we really need for a loading tool. You're going to see a lot of different loading tools here today. And again, we blast differently based on the mine plan, what the material is going to be like that we're going to have to be blasting. Can we blast it really hard, or do we have to blast it light, and we have material that's poorly diggable? Again, you're going to have the opportunity to get around the 6290 down below, but that's really the start of our mining operation. So this operator, properly trained, we're going to start down on the left side of our face, and we're going to dig ourselves a pocket. The advantage of that pocket is I'm now able to tuck that truck around in front of that loader, and I'm going to have very short tram distance to put that bucket into the truck. You don't want to see more than one and a half tire revolution on that loader, and that's what our hydraulics are matched at, is full engine RPM, and that's going to allow that bucket to be up to truck rail height to comfortably go into the bed of that truck. Again, in that one and a half tire revolution operating in first gear. Again, that's an 8.3 yard bucket. This machine's designed to swing 12 and a half ton of pass, whether it's in a high lift configuration or a standard lift configuration. Now, as we start getting into our larger loaders, there is a different swung capacity if it's a high lift versus a standard lift. Again, you notice how close that he stand to the back of that truck to keep down that cycle time. And again, this machine will be cycling in that 23, 24 second cycle, which again is that ideal match. We got into the off-highway truck business in 1963 with over 60,000 units sold today. We've been in this business a long time and we really understand this product and the value that it brings. 15 different models in mechanical drive and electric drive from the 770 at 40 ton to the 797 at 400 ton. So one of the advantages to the wheel loader as well is he's his, own, he's his own cleanup man. So you get a little bit of spillage, he'll clean that up during this truck exchange time and then he'll go ahead and be ready for the next truck when he comes in. So up on top of the hill, the new 6015B. So those of you that remember the old 5110 and the 5110B, this is a replacement for that machine. The biggest advantage to this machine is we have reduced one pass. So what used to be a five pass match into the proper size truck 773, 775, we've completely eliminated one more pass. That machine's swinging 17 ton of pass with a 10.6 yard bucket. This machine, as well as the 6020 that's right in front of us, is only available today in a backhoe configuration. So again, if your job requires a backhoe, both of these machines will fit nicely. 6015 target is the 773 through the 777 at a four to seven pass match. And again, getting rid of that one additional pass is really gonna help to drive down that cost per ton. A 1.7% fuel advantage and a 7% cycle time reduction in the 5110. So there's a lot of systems on that machine that are allowing us to achieve those numbers. And we're gonna be around these machines this afternoon with the subject matter experts and we'll be able to dive into that just a little bit deeper. We have over 130 different models and configurations of excavators today from wheeled excavators, tracked excavators as you see here, mass excavators which is really what we use when we talk about the 390 and down with a short stick, short boom and a big bucket. Again available in backhoe and front shovel configuration. Six different backhoe models from 8 to 44 yard in diesel and electric and seven different front shovel models from nine to 68 yards, the largest one being capable of four passing a 797. So we're swinging roughly 100 ton of pass. We loaded the 775G up on top, rated it, uh, rated it 70 ton. We're loading a 777G on the bench right in front of us to 100 to 105 ton. So the new 6020B, You'll be able to get on it today. Those of you that can see a brand new design and one of the most comfortable and efficient cabs in the industry today. The other thing that makes this machine extremely popular is the modular design. So your engine, coolers, pump drive, pumps, everything is built into that back module on that machine. If you have a number of these machines on site, we can have a module rebuilt and ready to go out on an exchange and change that module out extremely quick. Easy access on all of these machines, and we really focus on that today is how do we go about making it easier and safer for our technicians on site to service these machines and get them back in the dirt quickly. Again, another, uh, another shot of the 777G. We've got two of them here today. 
And that's the new 992K. So we just got done doing a production study with this machine next door at our proving grounds where we do a lot of our test and development work. This machine will be released very, very soon and, uh, and able to be purchased. So 992K, again, available in a standard lift and a high lift configuration designed to swing 21 ton per pass in a high lift and 24 ton in a standard lift. So this is a standard lift machine and you can see that it's very comfortably loading this 777 to a rated payload of 100 to 105 ton. This machine also has what we call economy mode. And when you put this machine in economy mode, it's going to give you a, a really large fuel savings on this machine. So we're getting roughly the same production rate out of the machine, but we're saving fuel. So for those areas that you don't have that need for constant heavy truck loads and I'm not stacked up in the truck and I want to run out at full engine RPM, you can go to the economy mode, still keep yourself in that same production rate while saving fuel at the same time. The boom is a steel fabricated boom with high strength castings at the pin joints. So if, you're, you, if you know the old 992G, this front structure on this machine is completely different. So again, this afternoon we'll get around that machine. You can also see the optional boarding ladder. And you can also see the flaps on the back bumper. Now pay attention to this machine and the 993. Again, that's part of the ground service that we're really focusing on on these machines. The other thing that's new on this machine is this ha it has what's called a profit handle. So the operator can raise and lower the bucket. He can curl and dump the bucket, but there's also a roller switch on the top of the handle now. So he can actually use his thumb to run the bucket. Once he dumps the material in the truck, he can flick that switch and that bucket will come back to the ready to dig position. So the 993K has been out for several years now. Very popular loader in our lineup today. A really good match in a standard lift configuration for that 100 ton 777 and a very cost effective match as well for the 785. You put the 993 in a high lift configuration, it can also comfortably load the 789 to a rated 200 to 205 ton. This is extremely important. So that machine today can also be considered as a good support machine for your HMS machines going in and cleaning out some of these corners, going in and doing some of your early on drop cuts and things like that. Four pass into the triple seven size truck, six pass to the 785. And the difference in reach and clearance between a standard lift and a high lift is about two foot. Again, that makes a big difference when you're trying to put that material right in the center of the bed of that truck to give us that proper load disp displacement left to right and front to back. 785G rated capacity of 150 ton, 550,000 pound max GVW. Extended service lives on this machines with a lot of the components, checkpoints and fill points now move down to the lower level again. So it's easier for the technicians to maintain these machines. Available with the 3600R51 tire. The other thing that you'll notice is the new cab design. Now this is a tier four 785G and you can see the treatment up on top of the deck. Again, if you've paid attention, and again, we started at this little pocket we have down on our left hand side and we're working our way to the right. So again, he's keeping that truck tight back against that toe to keep that cycle time down. So inside those rubber flaps on the back are your lockout tag out locations, it's your service locations, and on the 993K, there's also a service station on the other side at the hydraulic, uh, hydraulic articulation joint right behind the cylinder to come in and do the services on this from ground level. And Ken, it's probably a good time to just talk a little bit about how we don't want to forget one of those foundational elements with our GT. Uh, with our wheel loaders and the ability to load the bucket, improve that productivity, make sure that we understand as part of that loading system that the GET there can really be a big part of ensuring that you're getting the loads into the bucket at lowest cost per ton. So you just saw the new 789 come in. That truck's been down here for a couple of years now. Increased capacity on that truck. So when we look at increasing the capacity on the truck, there's a lot of additional things that we need to look at from ROP certification, steering and braking certification, just to get that five additional ton in that truck. But again, that five additional ton in that truck is gonna go a long ways to helping us reduce our cost per ton. So the thing that you're noticing here, we're moving this really quick and it's very consistent. And this is what needs to happen on your mind site today is to make sure that these truck exchange 
times are happening in that world class of about 0.7 of a minute or roughly 40 seconds. So that 789s get loaded by the 6040. That machine's available in a front shovel and a backhoe configuration, 28.2 yard bucket on that machine. Again, based on your material density, the size of the body, we can adjust that bucket size to make sure that we're getting the maximum performance out of that machine and keeping those pass matches even going into that truck. Again, that machine available, front shovel backhoe um, configuration, also uh, electric configuration as well. And the ideal truck match for this is going to be the 785 to the 789. But you can also, again, at a low cost, load the 793 and possibly using it as another one of those support tools when your big rope shovels and your larger machines are down. 789, again, increase of 5 ton. So we're running about 200 ton target payload on that truck today, just depending on how it's configured. You also notice the stairway on that machine when he made the turn. And that machine also has detect on it. We'll be able to talk about that this afternoon. And when you look across our product line, all these machines are ready to take the technology that we talked about this morning. So there's a group inside Caterpillar that's called OEM Solutions Group. And we really rely on them to work with you to make sure that we have the right support tools on your site. This is a 777 mega water tank with a 20,000 gallon tank on it. And it has the CAT smart watering system on it. That system is actually going to allow us to put the water down where we need it. So it's going to look at ground speed. It's going to look at the requirement that you've put in. And there's seven different programmable settings on that machine to put that water down. The other thing that you'll see up on top, up over the mine portal tunnel, is another group that we work with. And that's a Hallmax truck made in Australia. The design of that truck is actually going to allow that truck in that 90 to 100 ton range to go out on those long hauls where we start running into situations with our tires where we get overheating on a truck like a 777. This truck will come in and be able to do that all day long. And there's properties around the world where these trucks are making a one-way run of 15, 20, 25 miles. So again, there's definitely an advantage to those in certain applications on your mine site. 740 ejector and the 745. 45 ton on the 745, 42 ton on the ejector. Now, the thing I want to point out is the ejector bed. We talk about haul roads. I don't want to bring in a big dozer after I've dumped the material out with a truck to put a nice two, three, four inch lift down on my haul road. You notice how easy it is for him to come in and spread this material out. The rougher the terrain, the more these trucks like it. All wheel drive, articulate, swivels in the middle. So the rougher terrain, the softer the terrain, the better that these trucks do. And again, low operating cost on these units to come into your operation and again, help us do this support work at a very low cost. 745 is a new unit. We're going to be able to carry about 10 more yards in that with that tailgate. Downside is he had to stop to unload that material. But there are applications where that's completely acceptable. So think about both of those trucks in your operation today. So we talked about haul roads. We spread some material out. We understand how much of a negative impact high rolling resistance has on our haul roads. What happens when we don't have proper haul road width? How does that impact achieving that 34 mile an hour on our trucks? So we're going to bring in some motor graders and talk about them here just a little bit. The 160M and the 16M. Now, the 16M is not a current machine. So the 16M3 is the machine that you will get today, and there's a lot of improvements on the 16M3 from what you typically saw on some of our 16Ms that are in the field today. We make, uh, we make nine different M-series machines today and four different K-series. So if you remember the G and the K, so those machines are very similar and really different from what we have available today in our M-series. The 16M, which is coming up in the back, 16-foot moldboard, it has the optional ripper on the back. It also has that optional push plate or that counterweight on the front. 160M is an all-wheel drive machine. So think about support on your mine site, reclamation, working slopes. I don't want to be bringing that big 16 off my haul roads to do that type of work. I want to take advantage of a machine that's going to operate at a little bit lower cost. It's set up to work some of these applications where the 16M is not an all-wheel drive machine, slick conditions and things like that. We put the ripper on it. We put the weight on the front. That makes that machine heavier, and it's going to help it stick to the slope just a little bit better. Again, the 16M3 today is about 4,000 pounds heavier than the 16M. 
Again, we can put a lot of the terrain features and things that we talked about earlier on these machines. So we go in there one time, whether we're loading out material into a truck or we're bringing in fill, we know that we're staying right on grade and I don't have to be double handling any of this material. So the next two motor graders coming in, it's probably the first time that a lot of you have seen this. So we had a gap between the 16 and the 18 and we looked at coverage on our haul roads of those 80, 90, 100 foot wide haul roads. How do we go in and actually get better coverage on these roads to allow our trucks again to run at those higher speeds and we're not interfering with the truck traffic? This 18M motor grader with an 18 foot mole board is going to give us about a 15% advantage on coverage time compared to the 16M3. On the 16M3, the block on the front, the ripper on the back is an option. It's standard on this machine. So this machine is 3,000 pounds heavier than the 16M3, about 5% more power than the 16M3, and then again, about a 15% increase in coverage time to allow us to get off of that road much quicker. The other thing that you just noticed here is, again, they're properly trained operators. 24M motor grader, 24-foot mole board, standard ripper on the back, guide block on the front, but the thing about both of these guys is they've been properly trained and they understand how to make an articulated turn. That 24 motor grader will take 104 foot to turn around on a haul road. A typical 793 haul road is about 90 feet wide. So that means that that truck is actually going to be disrupting the flow of our trucks while he makes his turn if he's not properly trained. He made that articulated turn and was able to do that turn in about 40 feet. So he's only going to be working in one lane of that haul road, and we're going to safely be able to run our haul trucks, loaded or empty, past that motor grader. It's time for scrapers. Now, we talk about cost per ton. With our loading tools, we're going to talk about cost per yard with scrapers and with our track-type tractors. 623H, it's the only elevating scraper we have in our lineup today. But just imagine that we pulled this windrow of material out of a ditch, again, to give our water somewhere to run and keep it from deteriorating our haul roads. Very low cost machine to come in and pick up that windrow. Instead of bringing in a, a, a small loader and an articulated truck, again, disrupting the flow on my haul road, we're going to be able to come in and pick up that material without any disruption at all. So we have the 623, which is based off of the 621 tractor model. We also have 631. 637 and a 657. So any of the nomenclatures that end in a 7 is a twin engine machine just like you see coming across the slope in front of us. So that's a pair of 627s. Those are considered push-pull. So if these two guys were going out to load those scrapers right now, they would actually get into the dig. The back scraper would hook his bail over the hook on the back of the front scraper and those two scrapers would actually load each other out in about 30 seconds. Once they're loaded, they unhook and they go to the dump area. When these two scrapers hook up together, they have about 1,400 horsepower to the cutting edge. If you notice when they went by, and you might be able to see them across the bench, they're gonna come in and spread that material out. We also have systems on here, similar to terrain, that are gonna make sure that these guys come in and put this material in the right place, and when they cut it, they've taken it from the right place. Up on the slope, another twin engine scraper, the 637K. You can push pull, but it's also very common for us to be loading scrapers with a track type tractor. That 637 push pull is a nice match with that D10T. We also took advantage of that downhill loading. So we're going downhill. We have an advantage for the tractor with the additional weight nosing downhill. Also for that scraper, it feels like it's heavier. So now he's gonna get a greater load going down that hill. And if you noticed, he was able to load that scraper out again in about 18 to 20 seconds. And we look at the cost per yard of that. Again, for some of your support work, your reclamation work and things like that, it's going to deliver an extremely low cost per yard. Probably the only thing that's going to deliver a lower cost than that is a drag line. But again, there's a very small window for opportunity with drag lines because the material has to be situated just such to do that. But again, that will be your low lowest cost per yard if you can make that fit in your application. We talked about haul roads again. So we brought in that material, we spread it out. We need to build this road up to try and keep us from, uh, from getting too much rolling resistance. 
increase in rolling resistance is reduction in component life and an increase in fuel burn. So again, we know right where we're at with that machine with terrain on it to put this to grade. We'd put a little bit of water on there and seal that up so if we do get any moisture, it's going to be forced to shield off into our ditches and not penetrate the road. 854K, the back end of that's a wheel loader. So is where that machine changes is from the torque converter at the articulation joint forward. Those are all Caterpillar parts in our cat par system supported by our Caterpillar dealers today. So a rule of thumb with a track type tractor versus a wheel dozer is if you need mobility and if you're typically pushing 0 to 60, 65 percent blade load with good traction, you need to look at a machine like this. If you're pushing 0 to 60 percent blade load and you're tramming a track type tractor around, on a D11, for example, you will easily be adding about $75 to $100 an hour operating cost to that tractor. Very efficient machine. The other thing is with the speed of these machines, working with like a rope shovel or a hydraulic front shovel, my goal is when he's loading trucks, I can't disrupt the loading of a truck. He can make a quick cleanup pass under a shovel in about 20 seconds and be out of the way. World-class truck exchange time remembers 40 seconds. He's not going to disrupt us at all. So again, think of how that machine's going to add value. Now, there was two of those machines made with the Ripper. This is the second one. So one of them is up running in North Dakota right now. That machine we decided to bring down here four years ago, so we had it here for Mine Expo. 994K. So we've been making 994s for about 25 years, and this is a brand new center line. So depending on how the machine's equipped, this machine is going to be about a 100,000 pound increase in weight from where we were with the 994H. 3516 Tier 1, again designed to 5 past the 789 and 6 past the 793. Now if you're noticing, there's a consistent pattern here. Everything that we're coming out with new from the 15 to the 20 to the 994, we're eliminating one pass from what we had on our previous model. Again, that one more pass is going to give us typically 30 seconds to go in and put it into that next truck per hour. So every time I can save 30 seconds, at the end of that hour, I could very easily load out four additional trucks. So the 994K, where we had... Where we had a standard lift, a high lift, an extended high lift, and a super high lift on a 994H, today we have only a standard lift and a high lift. But the high lift on this machine is equivalent to where we were with the extended high lift on the 994H. So the difference in reach and clearance between a standard lift machine and a high lift machine is going to give you about three, about three foot roughly of additional reach and clearance. Again, allowing us to productively and comfortably put the load in the center of this truck. High lift configuration is going to swing 42 ton of pass and capable of swinging 45 ton of pass in the standard lift configuration, again, which is comfortable for that 789 size truck. Bucket size available from 25 to 32 yard. And again, 29% more payload than a 994H and up to 25% more productive. And this really gets related right back to cost per ton. These numbers are really big. And again, when we run the calculations on these, when we match them up with the right size trucks, it's a huge savings when we start looking at TCO. 793F, bulletproof truck in our lineup today. This truck's been around a long time. If we look at the history of the 793s, over about 223 million field hours, and they have moved over 65 billion tons of earth around the world. There's a lot of these trucks out running today that have in excess of 150,000 hours on them. So that really tells the story in itself that this is an extremely robust truck. C-175-16, this machine will be 5 to 10% more productive than the 793D. We've increased the maximum gross vehicle weight on this machine. We've increased that payload by 10 ton, again, bringing down that TCO. We look at 994 again, and we're looking at proper truck spotting. We're looking at that nice, tight V pattern, and we're looking at full payloads again to make sure that we stay, again, in a rated load on that 994, and we keep us at that ideal six-pass match. 
Get 250 ton payload on the 793. You'll have the opportunity to get around that machine again this afternoon. Now I want to point out, if you look down on the bumper, there's a couple of things on this truck that are a little bit different. You see the LADARs on there. Those are detect. So if that operator gets something in his way, a truck pulls in front of him and it's in his blind spot or on his sides or behind him, he's going to be alarmed to tell him that there's a truck in his work zone. He's going to be get, get out of the truck, make sure that it's clear before he moves that truck anywhere. And you also notice that one had a hitch on the front. So in the unlikely event that we have to move that truck, that truck's without power, we can come up with a specially equipped pin truck, pick up that truck, run it to the shop, and quickly turn it around and get it back out. I'm going to make a couple little cleanup passes here with the 94. Let him clean up our floor just a little bit and uh, move on. So, so Kent, while, we, while the 994 is just cleaning up there, we'll talk a little bit about the 793F there and even with the wheel loaders. We see a lot of these trucks today at customer sites getting well in excess of 7,000 hours on the clock year on year. And one of those key uh, processes that we like to use with that to ensure that we get the hours from the trucks is condition monitoring. Typically, we've looked at condition monitoring as site conditions, fluids, electronic data, inspections and repair history. But our dealers can help work with you as the customers on the various levels of condition monitoring that you need and to support you, all the way from some of the bases up to uh, the CAT ECA, which is our dealers provided condition monitoring process. So we've seen the 60-60 here earlier loading during the... Uh